Hey all, how's it going? Now today, I want to have a chat about chains. In particular, my chain. Look at it. Fucking snapped. If you can see that, the pin, well it's snapped in half and obviously split it open. Now, this chain was the original chain that was on the bike, which is approximately four years old now. And when I got the bike, it did have a few rust spots on the chain because it had been left out for I don't know how many months outside. And uh, yeah, out the other day, clunked the gear, thought I'd missed one, clunked to another one, went in, nothing, looked behind me, chain was doing a snake up the road. Now, this chain isn't actually worn, I still have plenty of adjustment left on, on the adjusters here. But one of them things, four year old chain. Yeah. To look at these sprockets, yeah, they've only just, just started to hook over. And, you know, what can you do? So, obviously, we're going to have to put a new chain and sprocket on. But when the chain come off, here's my chain guard. Ripped it clean out. This is only plastic anyway. But yeah, that kind of saved it from, I guess, mashing up around this area and getting caught and doing damage here, there and everywhere. But yeah, I was lucky. I was on the straight, not going particularly fast. So, yeah, chain broke. So, while it's all apart, I thought I'd have a look at some bits and bobs and tidy some stuff up. Here's my sprocket carrier. I'll give it a bit of a tidy up. Oh, look at that. She's shiny. Yeah. That seems all fine. Bearing's fine. No grit or nothing in there. And the sprocket hub rubbers. Hub rubbers. They've got no cracks and I've checked them all out. Give everything a clean up. All on my guides here. I don't know if you can actually see this, but uh, I've got most of it here. That had this shit in it. Yeah. I like to keep the chain in good nick as it is, but that's just wear and tear, and that shit's like fucking grinding pace, so I've cleaned everything up, this top guide, which is here, cleaned that up, this guide here, this bottom guide, and this guide underneath here, because you don't want to be putting a new chain on, on the grit and shit, which you've already got on there, so, uh, oh, pardon me, yeah, so, let's crack on. So, here's the sprockets, JT, decent quality, CZ chain, decent quality, here's the link, comes with the link, well, with the split pin, to either put it in the grooves, which I wouldn't advise, or you bevel them over, but we'll get to that in a bit. So, first things first. So, first of all, I've cleaned all the nuts and bolts up, so... It's got all the crap off there from the original thread lock. And, uh, well, as you can see, these are shaped. And these got recesses in them, which obviously just fits on your carrier, like so, in there, like that. Thread lock on the other side, torque them down. And that's that, really, for that part of it, anyway. So. Put the sprocket on the carrier, torqued all down, simple job, plonk it in, Ooh, like so, this is all good, here we go, and there you go, that's that done, while you got it apart, probably a good idea to take your adjusters off, give them a clean as well, and your spindle, always give that a good clean, a little blob of grease on it, all the way up and uh, obviously uh, your spacers no, give it a good clean and the other and the other space uh, and the other spacer as well yeah so let's put the back wheel in in there I believe go on so the wheels in spins nicely I don't know if you guys know this but on these KTM's they have these adjusters here and these can be twisted round either way and same on the other side if I can scoot around here same on the other side yeah 
obviously you just take it off and then turn it around that way for more chain adjustment if you decided you want a different size sprockets and what have you but yeah there you go and obviously the nut fits in the recess voila so choice is yours you new sprockets and what have you it'll be uh it won't be at the very top but if you do if you do turn it around the other way you do get a lot more movement up to the top I can't really do this with one hand but it's suffice, suffice to say this gap here is a lot shorter than this gap here when I turn this around onto it but we shall see how this new chain fits and then we can adjust it from there so new chain on let's go so front sprocket as you can see one side has got a lip on it and one side hasn't obviously the splines um, you can get this on the wrong way I'll show you that's the right way with that inside but if you put it on this way it'll still fit yeah but the splines won't be able to catch this and this is the locking washer which you bend over this nut here I don't know if you can actually see it one side of the edge here oh look that's better yeah that is where that seats into there and oh, left right left right here we are where are we here we are look and you just peen this over so that's the wrong way oh drop the fuka you fuka that's the right way and obviously they fit on the splines I'm having a guesswork here I'm trying to get it into the same spot as it was and obviously that fits over there it's got a recess in it to a layer for the poking out of the splines and there we go and that's it and you just tie it up lock it down to the correct torque and hang on I can't really see this from here but where we're looking, where the fuka we're looking here on this edge here yeah this is it, this edge here yeah you just bend this over so it's flush to stop it from coming undone it locks it and oh yeah while you put, before you put this on put a bit of nut lock on it it's not going to do no harm and yeah so chain next so here's the tool set up it's a motion pro one Thanks Sid, you're a star. Here's, here's this bit here, this is uh, the back which fits in here which goes on the backing plate and here is the front of it which has got holes in it which which lets the uh, which lets the pins slide through. I'm going to lost the bit but anyway it fits over like so. So assemble the tool So, tools assembled, put on. Uh, there you go. It's on the back plate to stop the pins from pushing through because sometimes if you don't get these holes lined up, which is looking good, you can't really see it very well. But if you don't get the holes lined up, sometimes it pushes the uh, pushes the pins through again. And then, obviously, on one side. Tighten up half, not half, quarter of a turn, check it, measure it, measure it between these two plates. And once you've got the same diameter on this, on your master link, as your other plates here, then it's time to swap the tool over for the peening device. But I can't actually show you this because I can't do it, I can't do it, I've not got three hands. So, after a little bit of tinkering, we've, uh, we've got it. Here's here's one that I haven't done 1820 
another one I haven't done, 1820. Here's the one I've done, oh, hang on, 1824. That's uh, close enough, basically. Now, to swap the tool over and to splay the edges out on this rivet here. So, here we go. So, here's the setup, <coughs> excuse me, for the uh, actual riveting of the chain. Uh, this is a Motion Pro one. Here's the pin. You can see it's got a little bit of a, a shaped end which fits in to there. You don't have it all the way in. Well, actually, if I can actually plunk it in there. Well, it fits in there and obviously comes through there and you just push it back in there. Now, here... Where is it? Oh, here it is. Here's the anvil. I don't know if you can see this, but they're quite... A, quite a deep hole in there and sometimes when you're pushing these we're pushing when you try to peen these over <coughs> excuse me they push the pin back through so therefore you've got to push the pin back from the other side pain in the ass basically but today I should just use a bolt which fits in there and it's hardly well it's just about flush anyway and that will do fine and this goes in here, oh, this goes in here like so. Oh dear, this is not easy with one hand. So, anyway, I'll put it on and explain a little bit more. So, the tool is on. And basically, you just nip this up just a little bit. Not much, not even half a turn, not even that. Because what you'll do, you'll push these plates together and then they won't be the same length apart. As these ones, and obviously, the, uh, you get problems. So, you just tighten this one up, and then obviously, I can't do it because I've only got one hand as free. So, hold on to this, tighten this up a little bit, uh, probably quarter of a turn, take it off, measure it, see what, see, uh, see what situation you're at, and then go from there, basically. But yeah, let's go. So we've done one of them, and we'll just measure them. Well, we've already measured it, but I'm just showing you guys. It's 20.75. This is the one that I haven't done. And then we'll go to the one that I have done. 20.95, so 20 thousandths. Probably could do it a little bit more, but that's fine. 20 to 30, but you'll have to check the manufacturers. Manufacturers, your chain manufacturers, to see what they say. To see what they say, uh, they need to be splayed over us. But as a rule, 20 to 30, you know, you should be okay. So, let's do the next one. So, this is the other one, which I've just done. Checking it, 2120, sweet. And uh, I've done that one a little bit more, that's up to 25 now. So, I've measured the, the distance across here. This hasn't moved. Um, like I was saying earlier on about these adjusters, I've had to turn this around the same on the other side because I've already uh, adjusted the chain. And obviously, with this on this end, there wasn't enough space for the chain to be uh, at its proper tension. So, it's just a matter of putting chain guard on, front sprocket cover. And uh, don't forget to do this, guys, because you've had your back wheel here. Oh, lost my balance. Give the brake a bit of a pump to take up the slack. Yeah, so that's it. Hope you like this uh, kind of tutorial or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, like, subscribe, comment. Thank you very much. Goodbye.